All right, what's going on, man? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron, and today we're doing tier four wide receiver rankings. This is going to be the last installment of my tier series we've been doing with the, the top three tiers of running backs and the top four tiers of wide receivers. And it's just a little bit of a, of a, a little a little taste of my of my perfection that's going to be my draft guide. It's going to have all the tiers in there. This is kind of a preview, and these tiers are, are going to 100% change from now until uh, end of August when we're dominating drafts. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, my rankings are going to be changing throughout the offseason. But today we're getting into 0.5 PPR wide receivers. I'm grabbing at least one of these guys in every single one of my drafts. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, first up, we got Mike Evans. He's going off the board of the 301 as the wide receiver 8. I have him as my wide receiver 11, but I wouldn't say I'm too low on him. Mike Evans is just a, a super fun receiver, man. There's nothing like demoralizing your opponent and just 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 putting your schlong on on the ESPN matchup screen as Mike Evans goes off for 8, 190, and 3 touchdowns, bro. Like, Mike Evans is going to have extremely insane weeks, and he does that as, a, as an elite deep threat. When you look at his stats, his efficiency stats in particular in 2019, he was number 2 in target distance, number 4 in ADOT, and number 8 in yards per pass route. So he's he's getting the most valuable looks there is. He's he's getting these looks down the field and he's been he's been nothing but consistent. M Mike Evans is somebody who I think has has always been a great receiver. He's just kind of overlooked and and just kind of pushed to the side of the league. When you look at Mike Evans, he's had six straight 1000-yard seasons and the only other receiver to ever do that in their first six seasons is Randy Moss. That's some pretty good company to be in. When I first had my rankings with Mike Evans, I ended up moving him five spots after doing the write-up for this video because Tom Brady doesn't feel like that great of a fit with Mike Evans. But when you think about it, Tom Brady has thrown to guys like Randy Moss before. And not just that, but Tom Brady had the ninth best deep ball completion percentage in the league last year. In 2020, this Buccaneers offense is going to go crazy. You're, you're going to have these massive weeks with Mike Evans going crazy. Brady's going to throw for 30 touchdowns. And I think that there is there is enough, uh, there's going to be enough volume to go around for Mike Evans to be uh, a back-end wide receiver one in fantasy this year. All right, next up we got FaZe Juju, the TikTok god, Juju Smith-Schuster. He's my wide receiver 12. He's going off the board at the 405 as the wide receiver 17. And I think that's way too low, man. I fucking love this guy. Juju, he is such a fun player and he's so young for what he's accomplished in the league. He's been nothing but great in his first two seasons, but... 2019 was ugly. He he suffered a toe strain in week one and a concussion in knee sprain in week 10, and he lost his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, in week one. So now he has a toe strain, he's fighting through injuries, and he's catching passes from Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. In 2019, the combination of Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph averaged 186 passing yards per game, and they totaled 18 passing touchdowns. From 2016 to 2018, Ben Roethlisberger averaged 293 passing yards per game, and 32.4 passing touchdowns uh, per season. Expect the quarterback situation to take a huge step forward. I, I'm not saying uh, Big Ben, um, he has come out and said that he's addicted to porn, um, and, I, and I can respect him for that, man. We can all, we can all get past that. Big Ben, he, he's off porn, he's off alcohol. The guy, the guy is, he, he's, he's ready. He's ready to go, man. He's, he's going to be having that, that testosterone pumping through his veins, and he, he might not be exactly what his old self was, but even if he can just be better than league bottom, which is, which is what Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph was last year, the offense is going to take a huge step forward. We're not even going to pay attention to Juju's last season because, because we know the kind of talent he is, because he's shown it to us before, and because we know that he has a good prospect profile, there's no reason to, to think that what happened last year to Juju was because that he was, he's bad at football. You look at his profile... And like I said, we've known that he's, he's good. He had an 82nd uh, percentile college target share, and he broke out at 18 uh, at USC. His best comparable is DeAndre Hopkins. So when you look at 2018, the year before last year, he was top five in targets, receptions, yards after the catch, and yards. And you just got to throw it away. Last year, he was only 23. The kind of production that he's had in those first two years are historical. He was third in receiving yards among wide receivers who were 22 or younger with guys like Randy Moss and Josh Gordon. So expect him to, to revert back to that form. We know he's good. It's just it's just that he had an unlucky season last year. He's going to have he's going to have a better quarterback and he's going to stay healthy this year. 
and I expect Juju to do great things, and I, I could even see him sneaking into this next tier. At 13, we got Adam Thielen. He's going off the board of the 304 as the wide receiver 11 in fantasy drafts. I like him in that range, especially because he's at a discount after what happened in 2019. Last year, he finished outside the top 30 in points per game, and it was largely due to a, a couple of things. So when you look at it, the Vikings, they switched to a run-first approach with Kevin Stefanski, and they had the third lowest pass attempts per game with 29.2, and they had the fourth... Uh, highest run-to-pass ratio in the league. There wasn't a lot of food on the table for Adam Thielen, especially with Diggs there as well. After week six, he was dealing with injury. If you look at those first six games before he was hurt, he was actually doing pretty well in this system that was working against his favor. He was the wide receiver nine through the first six weeks. He was on pace for 69 catches, 13 touchdowns, and 976 receiving yards. So the touchdowns did kind of hold him up in those first six weeks, but it just goes to show that he is a top 12 receiver in, in fantasy leagues. Now, when you look at 2020, this season looks like it could be special for Thielen. You got you got Diggs leaving. Thielen is a stud. In the first half of 2018, he was a wide receiver one. And, and it was a sad day when I had to pull up to MetLife to see the Vikings versus Jets game. I thought it was going to be a, a, a whatever matchup. And Thielen comes in there and drops his nuts in the stadium and drops nine catches for 110 yards and a touchdown. And by the end, uh, the Vikings fans were doing skull chants in MetLife, man. So it was, a, it was a tough scene. Thielen's a stud. And Gary Kubiak is still going to run the ball. He's a new OC replacing Kevin Stefanski, who just went to Cleveland. But the, the reason for hope is because they're going to have to throw the ball more. They lost, in, they lost a lot of key pieces on that defense. They lost Linball Joseph, Xavier Rhodes, who... Jesus Christ, that guy's a bum, but it's it's still it's still their their cornerback one. He's he's gone. Trey Wayne's gone. Everson Griffin's gone. So that that defense, uh, they took some hits, man. So now now they're not going to have uh, such soft schedules to just run the ball. Last year they were number six in game script, and they were leading by an average of one point eight four in games. Now with the holes on the defense, expect that to take a step back and revert more towards the mean which creates more throwing opportunities for Kirk Cousins. So he's going to throw more 11 dome games. That's always a good thing for shootouts. So Adam Thielen is going to be the wide receiver one. And Justin Jefferson, I think he's a great wide receiver, but in year one, don't expect Justin Jefferson to fill in for Diggs. Expect some of Diggs' role to get absorbed by Thielen. So Thielen, Thielen looks like a stud for 2020, man. At 14, we got a guy who has a special place in my heart, man, Calvin Ridley. Uh, I wrote an article on him on Player Profiler early in this offseason, and I'll link it in the description down below. And that's where I got most of these stats from that I'm going to have uh, in this breakdown. So he's going off the board as the wide receiver 18 in the middle of the fourth round right now. Dude, I love that price on him. Atlanta's the perfect environment for a fantasy wide receiver one that's actually a real-life wide receiver two. And this is because of the passing volume. Last year, they were first in pass attempts with 684, and they passed the ball in a league high 67.3% of plays. And this is with teams like the Buccaneers passing the ball in, in an insane amount. The Falcons passed the ball even more than them. And it, it's not going to stop because this year, when you look at the Las Vegas win totals, the Falcons have the hardest schedule in the league. So they're going to have dome games, they're going to be behind in games, and Matt Ryan's just going to sling it. So... That, that leads to the question, where are these targets going? You, you got Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and then it's just a, a mesh of, of whatever. Like, last year, they, they lost Devontae Freeman on Austin Hooper and Mohamed Sanu last year, and that created the most vacated targets with 258. That was 68 more than the second team, the Cowboys. So they did bring in Gurley and Hayden Hurst, but that only absorbs Hooper and Freeman's 167 targets, and it leaves the rest for guys like Ridley and Julio to take. Now... When you look at Mohamed Sanu's absence, he got traded in the midseason last year. And when you see the splits between Calvin Ridley with and without him, they're massive. Now, during these splits, Calvin Ridley averaged two more targets per game as the wide receiver nine in points per game during this span. And if he maintained this pace throughout a whole 16-game season, he would have been the wide receiver six last year. He, he was on pace for 91, 1,315 yards and eight touchdowns. They, they didn't pick up anybody to replace Mohamed Sanu. They have Russell Gage, who I think is a full-blown bum. He's not going to be taking targets away from Calvin Ridley or Julio. Ridley's going to eat this year, man. And, and I, think, I think 14 might even be a little bit too low for him. So look for him to, to maybe jump up a few spots in my rankings. Next, we got Odo Beckham Jr. at wide receiver 15. And it sucks that he's this far down the rankings because we all know what kind of talent OBJ is. Even as a Jets fan, I miss the days where he was eating, he was having fun playing football. Last season just didn't feel like Odo Beckham. He's going off the board at wide receiver 13 at the end of the third, and I don't mind him in that range. It, he feels like a great value, but when you look at the 2019 season, it's, 
it's ugly, man. He had he had good volume, which which is nice. He was top twelve in targets with one hundred thirty three, and he earned a twenty five percent target share. But he's finished outside the top fifteen in receptions and outside the top twenty in yards. And he led the league in drops with eleven. And on top of the on top of all of this nothingness, he was outside the top thirty in points per game. So. Oof. This is a guy that people were taking at the beginning of the second and in, uh, in leagues last year, and he just completely dudded everybody's. Anybody who drafted Odell Beckham, you there's no way that you won a championship. And if you did, if you did, let me know in the comments, bro. I want to hear about it. But when you ask me, I, I'm not sure he was really his self last year. He he suffered a sports hernia and hip injury uh, in the preseason, and it was his first year in a new system. Now it would feel like wheels up for year two, fully healthy. But they just brought in Kevin Stefanski, who wants to run the ball. He, he just ran the ball at the fourth heaviest rate in Minnesota. And they brought in two tackles. They brought in Jack Conklin, and they got Jedrick Willis in the draft. And then they added in Austin Hooper, and they already have David Njoku. So this is just a clear sign that they want to run 12 personnel, which is wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, tight end, with no slot receiver. This just means uh, that they're going to want to run the ball with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. It's not too bad of a sign for Odo Beckham, who was just third in air yards last year and number two in deep targets. He, he was a deep threat in the, same, in the same tier as Julio Jones and Mike Evans on a volume standpoint. He was getting the same downfield looks as them, and Stefanski ran play action on 33% of team plays last year, which ranked uh, top five in the league. So they're going to they're gonna run the ball a lot, but there's going to be a lot of, of play action getting the ball to Odo Beckham deep. This is because the, the Browns don't have another deep option. Jarvis Landry is going to operate in the in the short to intermediate range, and then Odo Beckham is going to have some games where he's just going to catch bombs. I, I think there's no way that Odo Beckham finishes outside the top 30 this year, and he, he looks like a safe option to be in the top 20. It's just a matter of, of betting on his talent. All right, last up, we got A.J. Brown as my wide receiver 16. He's gone off the board of the 312 as a wide receiver 15, and he's so damn hard to rank because the guy, his skill level is insane. But it's it's a volume question, and it's it's a Ryan Tannehill question in terms of A.J. Brown. It has nothing to do with his actual skill set. If it was just his skill set, he would be a top 12 receiver. In 2019, he had one of the most insane re receiver seasons I've seen from an efficiency standpoint, and not just for a rookie, but for, for wide receivers across the board. When you look at his stats on player profiler, he was top five in yards per reception, yards per target, yards per pass route, production premium, target premium, quarterback rating when passed to, fantasy points per route, and fantasy points per target. Now, these are just a bunch of fancy words for saying that A.J. Brown did the most of what he was given uh, in 2019. The guy is six foot two twenty six, and he's built like a running back. Getting over 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns on only 84 targets is insane. He had 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns on 3.2 catches per game. It's hard to wrap your head around the kind of efficiency that A.J. Brown had last year. And the guy's a monster. This is all while he accomplished literally nothing in the first four games with Marcus Mariota. When you look at the splits with and without Marcus Mariota, he went crazy with Ryan Tannehill. In the 12 games with Ryan Tannehill, he, he pretty much doubled his half-point PPR points. He, he was getting two more targets per game, and he, he doubled his receiving yards. So once Ryan Tannehill stepped in, this is what, what really let A.J. Brown break out. And he was the widest ever 17 in points per game in those 12 games. And then taking it even a step further, A.J. Brown really kicked into that next gear on the back six games. In the last six games of 2019, this is a crazy stat. He was the wide receiver one in points per game, averaging 19.2. That was more than Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill. A anybody you can name, he was the wide receiver one for six games, the back six games as a rookie. Now, Tannehill should take a, take a step back. He kind of outperformed his actual talent last year. And the Titans were third in run-to-pass ratio. So they're going to be run-heavy. And we're not sure. We're not sure if Ryan Tannehill is the real deal yet. I'm, I think he could, he could be, but we don't know for sure. I, we got to see it a second time. We got to see it a second time. AJ Brown is a threat to crack the top ten. It's not a question of his talent. It's just a question of volume. All right, if you made it this far, man. I appreciate it. Go down below, subscribe, drop a like, leave a comment. I respond to everything. We're twelve subscribers strong right now, man. Be be that thirteenth, bro. Be that thirteenth. Um, draft guide's coming soon, early July, and I'll see you in the next one, man.